If you make videos, this video is for you. If you're making videos, most of my videos are really for you, but this one is really for you. I wanna look at a few features in DaVinci Resolve that can make your life so much easier. And these are all in one way or another, presets or templates or saving settings to use at a later time. We're gonna walk through a few different ways on multiple pages in DaVinci Resolve for how to quickly produce repetitive video, like YouTube videos most of the time. Now on this channel, I've created quite a few of my own presets using the Fusion page. And while that will be a part of this video, it isn't the entirety. So if you've been around the channel, we have some new information coming that I'm really excited about and that I'm sure can help out a lot of you. I'm gonna show off everything in this video in this little test project. This is from a few videos of mine going through some changes to OBS. A link to this will be in the description. Brilliant is math and science enrichment learning, taking a more active approach to education, as many of these skills you learn by doing instead of just listening. No more boring lectures or memorizing. Learning skills comes from doing the thing you're learning, and Brilliant is a website and app built off of this very principle. You solve problems and get coached bit by bit until you've learned a new STEM subject without even realizing it. This has been super key to me learning to pick up Python to enhance my projects, as it took me from a passing interest of, uh, oh, that would be cool, to a proper learning experience and developing a new skill. To get started mastering your own dream skills, head over to brilliant.org slash to sign up for free and join the community of 8 million learners and educators. The first 200 people that use that link will save 20% off the annual premium subscription, too. Happy learning. And first, let's go over those presets that I have made. Specifically, if you're working on YouTube videos, there are two that can really help you. First, I have my tutorial camera. Oftentimes, I'm talking over footage of me working in DaVinci Resolve, like, like you're probably watching right now. And if I had this group of, say, these first two clips, I could take those, make them into a compound clip, just to combine them all. And then here in my effects browser, I have made a tutorial cam preset. If you hover over, you'll see what it will look like. But once I drag it to that clip, you'll see the actual effect it has going on where it shrinks me down, puts me in the corner. And then I have a combination of using my standard transform options here to shrink me up or down, move me around inside of that and some custom controls on this effects page to change where this overall camera is. If you're doing any sort of tutorial or content where you want picture in picture, this can be a lifesaver. Next, I have a preset for a YouTube end screen. It's the preset I use on my videos. So uh, in a similar fashion, I'm gonna take this last clip, make that a compound clip, and come over to SSC YT end screen, drag that right on the compound clip. And as we scrub through, you'll see what starts to happen here is that as that clip is playing, the video actually shrinks down into the corner and if you go into your inspector in the effects browser, you can type in a custom message like, thanks for watching. Yeah. Now those are cool and I have touched on them in videos before. Link to these specific videos where you can see these presets and even download them to use yourself will be in the description. But now I want to talk about some other systems that Resolve has in place that can save you a lot of time. So when I make my tutorials, I have a standard set of audio settings and effects that I know I want to add to my voice. A custom EQ, some slight compression, all of that. So I'm gonna jump over to the Fairlight page and here you see in the mixer, this first track is this audio track recording from, from my video capture. And if I wanted to, I could open up EQ, I could open up the dynamics and rebuild the effect I want every time. But Fusion has something to make this much easier. Check this out. I'm going to come up to Fairlight Presets Library. And here you have a few different options. What's most important is this filter by drop-down menu. And here you have presets for specific parts of this mixer. But what I'm interested in the most is global track presets. If I click that and select this first audio track, you'll see I have some settings I have saved here. But at the bottom, I have YT Talk. This is the preset I use for my YouTube videos. If I select that and select the track I want to apply it to and then click Apply, you'll see that that drops in an EQ and custom dynamic settings. Even if these are minor changes, the fact that with just a few button clicks, I can get them exactly the same project to project saves me a ton of time. And this is the global track preset. If you stack effects or have a lot more EQ and compression and all that going on, you can save anything as a preset that you can drag in just like this. Let me show you how to actually make a preset. It's in the same menu. Say if I went into this EQ, and started doing some real crazy stuff just to demonstrate. Say I wanted to save this EQ. 
I don't, but say I did. In that case, you want to select the track that you have modified and click save new. And it'll likely give these pop up whether you want to create a new preset or override one. We're gonna create a new one and call it, this is bad. Okay, great. And then this pops up down here, this is bad. So then I'll use the second track, which, which is muted. We aren't using it, but I'll use it to demonstrate. I'll click audio two, uncheck audio one, audio two, this is bad. And if I click apply, you'll see over here in our mixer, all those same settings were applied to this other track. This is functionality I use on every video. I have these subtle changes that I know I like on my voice and I have them all saved as a global track preset that I apply right to my track with just these few clicks. Next, let's talk about color. First and foremost, I am not a colorist. The color page is intimidating to say the least, especially since I've been diving into the fusion page, that's definitely had a lot of my attention. So I know I haven't learned nearly enough of the color page as I really want to, which makes it all the more valuable when I create a look that I know I do like on the color page that I can save that look and easily apply it to clips later. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna jump over here to the color page and here you have this simple layout. If I wanted to do some simple changes like just pulling up the contrast, pulling up the saturation just a little bit, and then maybe some not so simple changes like making everything blue. I could do that. And let's say that this is my perfect grade that I want to save and be able to easily pull back in future projects. The color page has something for that called stills. If you just right click on your footage and click grab still, then over here you have your gallery and you have stills and you'll see that pops up. If you go to a different video clip, then you can right click on that still, go to apply grade, and it will pull over as many nodes as you had in your reference clip when you saved that still. But this looks bad. <laughs> and by default, the stills folder that will likely be open is a per project folder. Underneath that though, you should have power grades. And that is keeping and storing these stills across all projects. So whatever new project you open, you'll have that still available. If you open power grade, you'll see that I have a few here. And if I right click and click grab still, you'll see that blue preset opens up right there. And if I create any new preset, this still will be there waiting for me. And I can select any number of clips, right click on that, click apply grade, and it will apply them to those clips. But I know I don't like this blue still, so I'm going to select uh, all three of my video clips in the source one and actually apply the still that I know I like for my YouTube videos. Here we have some solid color. We've got a little vignette going on. I know I like this, I have it saved. And right here in Power Grades, if you spend especially a lot of time on a look that you know you like, and you're in a situation where you know your lighting isn't going to be changing very much, this can save you so much time. One last thing on the color page. In this example, I did just have these three clips, so I selected them all and individually applied the grade to them. But here is another functionality I really like, and that is grouping. If I select this clip, these three clips, I can right click and go to add into a new group. And I'll just name this new group. Okay. And that will give me a new option in this drop down menu over here. Normally you are applying a grade to a specific clip, but if you drop that down, now you have group, pre clip, and post clip. So if I go to group post clip and select this, go to my earlier still, apply grade, I'm applying that to the group. So that now if we jump in between, <laughs> This looks bad, it's okay. But now if we jump in between these clips, you'll see this blue effect has been listed on all of them. I'm going to go back to that, switch over to the preset I know I like. And that is all I have for you today. Just a few small ways that you can save time, especially when you're editing something like YouTube videos or just repetitive content where your setup won't be changing very much, where your audio or your lighting won't be changing, where you can save your audio settings as global track presets and all of your color work as stills. I really hope this is helpful for you. I know a lot of you who are either streaming or making gaming content, anyone that's sitting at a desk, this can save you a lot of time because you will be in those ideal circumstances. But that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.